Welcome to the program. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. It is Thursday, the day before Friday, and I really feel that the rainy season is here now because apart from just rain, you're seeing frogs. My name is DK Roster. Thank you for tuning in to CTV. We take you through till 8 o'clock. Right now, though, we want to say good morning. We heard that Minister Franklin can. He has had major heart surgery. And Minister Terence Dial Singh, he is in hospital for fever and body pains. So we wish them well. We wish them a speedy recovery as everyone who has to visit the healthcare system for whatever reason. But I'm wondering whether or not the, the health minister is making a little sting operation to go in and to see what's in the hospital. Well, I guess we'll find out, right? But we start the program. We are talking about an event called the two-day training on plant disease diagnosis. And we start off speaking to Dr. Durai Sami, and I'm going to let you pronounce your surname, please. Yeah, okay. My surname is Saravana Kumar. Um, shortly, I'm, I'm known as the Dr. Sara okay. in, in our department, in our faculty. Yeah. So please let me know about the plant disease diagnosis. It's a two-day something, but what, what is it dealing with? Yeah, okay. And uh, if you see the crop cultivation, and uh, it has major constraints, and uh, uh, they are caused by pests and diseases. And uh, this particular training program, uh, uh, actually I'm organizing it for the Agricultural Extension Officers of uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, this is uh, to uh, empower their uh, knowledge and information uh, on the causal agents of plant diseases, how to diagnose the diseases caused by different microorganisms like fungi, bacteria, and viruses. And um, so uh, this is about uh, the training program. And we teach them uh, how to diagnose the plant diseases based on the symptoms and based on the signs and based on the microscopic observations and based on the laboratory techniques like uh, isolation and uh, studying the cultural morphology. Then in addition to that, uh, we also teach them how to diagnose the plant diseases uh, based on the DNA techniques and based on the protein techniques. Okay, well, what are some of the most common diseases that you find in this area, in this space? Okay, and here, if you see, there are uh, several uh, diseases known to occur on uh, the crops, especially here in the tropical conditions. Uh, if you see uh, the bacterial wilt in tomato plants, which is a very serious problem here in the region, especially in case of uh, TNT. And uh, uh, similarly, we have several viral diseases. And uh, in case of uh, the fungal diseases, there is a root rot disease is there, and wilt disease is there, and uh, phytophthora, collar rot. In case of hot pepper, is a very serious problem uh, because it, it uh, destroys the entire plant. And uh, if, you, if you see phytophthora, it is actually uh, known as the plant destroyer. Uh, phyto means is a plant and uh, thora means is a uh, destroyer. So plant destroyer is a very serious problem affecting the roots, collar region as well as the stem region and it's is very serious problem. And in addition to that, this particular region uh, is very much uh, favorable for the occurrence of uh, anthrognose disease in case of hot pepper as well as in several other vegetable crops. Okay, what, what, makes, what makes this region specifically so ripe or makes makes it so possible for these types of diseases to occur? Okay, uh, always you know disease it is a triangle, always the disease occurs uh, and it has close association with the uh, weather factors like uh, soil moisture, temperature and relative humidity and if you see the temperature here it's high temperature as well as relative humidity is very high so this warm and uh, high humidity always uh, attracts the uh, pests and diseases and uh, also in case of lettuce, if you see that, that is a bacterial leaf spot disease. It's a serious problem. And uh, the bacterial leaf spot, you know, in case of lettuce, we consume the leaves. The leaves are the economically important products. And in that case, if the leaves are get diseased and uh, uh, the farmers will lose the entire crop. So uh, uh, the bacterial disease as well as the viral diseases and uh, uh, diseases caused by the fungal microorganisms, uh, they, they are all equally important and they are causing serious losses to the farmers in this region. All right, now, the thing is, I want to get back to the fact that the season is changing, so we're moving more from the dry season to the rainy season. But at the same time, someone might be thinking, okay, well, a few plants get diseases, 
is okay. Um, what are some of the implications that having this disease and having them on a widespread basis can, can be? Okay, uh, when we have uh, the change in the season from the dry season, during the uh, dry season, mostly you know, uh, we, we don't uh, cultivate much of the crops. But once we start the, uh, I mean, the rainfall season is started, then we started the cultivation of the crops. But this uh, fungi and bacteria, they will uh, remain in the soil as a dormant propagules. And when it gets the moisture and when it gets the host, that is the plants, and uh, they sense the plants and root metabolites and immediately they start uh, the uh, start attacking the plants so in that case we we, we have to uh, uh, advise the farmers or else we have to have a very good extension system and we have to empower the extension officers of tnt so that you know they can go to the farmer and they can inform that you will have this disease or you can expect this disease and you have to take some preventive measures because prevention is always better than cure in case of uh, the disease control and uh, also if, if we diagnose uh, the disease in a early stage then we can prevent the spread of the diseases which is uh, very good and it's an effective management disease management practice right now today is the closing ceremony yeah but at the same time what was the experience like in terms of like the two day the, the two day training okay actually this two day training program is organized uh, under the project uh, uh, promoting agriculturally important microorganisms to address the challenges in food safety and food security in the Caribbean and this is uh, this is the uh, three-year uh, project funded by the UWI Research and Development Impact Fund. And under this project, I'm working on the development of biocontrol uh, agents for the disease control, as well as the biofertilizers. So uh, uh, one of uh, the uh, training, or one of the program under this project is this uh, training. Uh, so we, we have uh, 23 officers, uh, agricultural extension officers, uh, from uh, various counties of uh, Trinidad as well as uh, we got uh, officers from the research division Centeno and we got officers from the uh, farmers training uh, information and division and then we got officers from three officers from Tobago the uh, agriculture division so we, we uh, give them uh, training uh, in lab as well as uh, in the uh, microscopic uh, observations as well as we are going to expose them uh, for uh, the isolation and culturing of uh, microorganisms in the lab today and also we expose them uh, about the DNA based as well as the protein based techniques uh, in the lab today so that you know they, they, they can uh, go with the knowledge of all these uh, diseases caused by fungi bacteria and viruses and they will be able to deliver their services effectively to the farming community so that you know at least uh, we, we, we empower them and uh, it, it will be a good sign uh, to get officers from all the counties and uh, so that you know and we, we are trying to develop the network among uh, the uh, agriculture extension system already they have it but still you know the research institution we are uh, as a UV and uh, extension system as they have uh, close contact with the farmers and there is always a, a kind of gap exists not only here in Trinidad everywhere in the world so, so we have to bridge that gap the research and uh, the uh, applied aspects of uh, the cultivation right, so you, that you, that uh, bridge uh, can or uh, that ca gap can be uh, uh, filled up by having this kind of training programs how important is it to fill that gap yeah, it's very important because, you know, if you see, if you, if you have a private company and if you sell your product, then you need someone like, you know, marketing to uh, reach your stakeholders. And here in our case, the research institution, we are working for the students and as a faculty of food and agriculture, as the department of food production, our stakeholders are the farmers. And similarly, the government institution, I mean, Ministry of uh, Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, their stakeholders, are, farmers are their stakeholders. So agriculture extension system, they are in close contact with the farmers. So well, whatever we do, whatever we develop the technology, whatever information and knowledge we have, uh, it has to be goes to the farmer but you know we have the teaching and research activities in the university so we cannot directly go to the field and we cannot uh, you know uh, uh, it's possible but still the mandates and resources but the agricultural extension system from the ministry uh, it has that mandate to reach the farmers so the uh, uh, now you know the research institution is there and the extension is there and farmer is there so we cannot we, we're reaching the farmers through agriculture extension offices. 
So that's why this kind of training program is very important so that this will uh, help us to build uh, the network with them. And in future, if, at all, if we have any problems from the farmer side, then farmers, uh, they can uh, contact the extension officers. Then extension officers can bring that problem to us and we can uh, try to solve and we can try to uh, work out the problem. That's how it, it, it should work and I hope it will work. So you say this is part of a three year program? Three year project. Uh, actually, uh, uh, in addition to the disease diagnosis, I am working on the uh, promotion of beneficial microorganisms because you know when disease occurs and uh, it has to be properly diagnosed, the misdiagnosis will invite the indiscriminate and continuous application of the uh, pesticides. If, uh, for instance, if there is a uh, uh, root disease and if it is not properly diagnosed and someone thought that it is because of some insect and if they apply the insecticides that will not con control the fungus so then again uh, after two or uh, five, uh, three days here the practice it's like this but at least we have to give a week time but again you know the farmer will see the field uh, i mean the plant and again he will go and get some other chemical and he will apply so that you know the, the misdiagnosis it will uh, lead to the higher or uh, more application of the pesticides. Uh, so uh, the proper diagnosis will uh, reduce the higher application of the pesticides. And in addition to that, uh, because of uh, the higher application of uh, the pesticide, pesticide residues and the environmental concerns are a major problem. So what I'm uh, trying to do here, uh, we are actually working on the isolation of uh, beneficial microorganisms from the different agro uh, agricultural ecosystem as well as the forestry ecosystems of Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, like how we have the comparable microorganisms, we have uh, the beneficial microorganisms. So once we have uh, these beneficial microorganisms, we can uh, uh, produce more of these mi uh, beneficial microorganisms and we can apply in the soil and we can build the soil fertility and it can help the plant to grow better as well as these beneficial microorganisms will take care of the harmful micro organisms by different uh, mechanisms. But that brings me to the point though, so if you misdiagnose and you apply the wrong treatment, yeah. um, can that harm some of those beneficial microorganisms? Uh, yeah, when you apply the chemicals, it can harm those beneficial microorganisms as well. So that what you're doing is when you're applying the chemical pesticides, you're completely eliminating both good and bad. So that will disturb the ecological balance. But whereas in our research, what we are trying to do, we are trying to build the uh, rhizosphere or the soil system with beneficial microorganisms so that it should take care of uh, the plant as well as the diseases. So uh, uh, that, that's uh, the basically about the project, and also you know the application of the pesticides it it attracts several environmental concerns, as well as if you see the vegetables especially, most of the vegetables you know the leafy vegetables they are consumed as raw materials like in case of lettuce and celery and all these things you know, uh, the, the the leaves are uh, important uh, portions. Um, so when you apply the pesticides and uh, it may remain uh, on the leaves. And if you see the uh, uh, lettuce, it's just about a five weeks or six weeks crop. But you know, if you see, if, if you hear the round of uh, applications of the pesticides, it will be just about you know four or five times. But the uh, period that you have to wait uh, before you consume, you know, it will be about seven days. And also, you have to give the interval of seven days. Uh, between the uh, subsequent application of the pesticides. But you know, if you just heard about that uh, six or seven uh, rounds of applications uh, of the pesticides, then you just think about that, how, how safe uh, we, we are eating uh, the product. So that, you know, uh, my, the idea is to develop some uh, environment friendly uh, practices and the biocontrol agents, I mean the beneficial bacteria and beneficial uh, fungi which can control, which can uh, eliminate the harmful microorganisms. Uh, All right, so, so we want to say thank you very much. Let me try, Dr. Durasamai Saravana Kumar. Oh, yeah, thank you. You <laughs> pronounced so my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. We want to thank you so much on both on wrapping up this two-day training as yeah. well as this three-year project because food security is so important to any sovereign yeah. nation. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you. Now stay tuned. We are talking with the head of the Pharmaceutical Board of Trinidad and Tobago. When we return, good morning Trinidad and Tobago. It continues after this. <laughs>